Hello, hello everyone. This is Steven Schinder of Yes Shift and Drum Talk TV. Uh, refreshing to make sure that my audio is good as I'm broadcasting. And yeah, this is, um, I wasn't sure, okay, yeah, it's good. I wasn't sure whether to call this a news episode or a bonus episode or what, but yeah, this is mainly uh, basically what I've been up to this past week as far as music goes, uh, mainly the first concerts of the year that I've attended so far. So those would be Earthside, Caligula's Horse, and Fake Band Practice. Um, and I also attended a John Anderson Patreon Zoom in between. It was a lot of fun, so... Um, yeah, so basically what I've been up to this past week, and um, I'll sprinkle a little bit of news, I guess. Um, but yeah, things have been kind of busy. Um, over at Drum Talk TV, we've been, we've had a couple of virtual concerts that we've put on, um, and that's presented by Drum Talk TV Brilliance. That's a membership site that we have now, uh, in January, we had the Kinky Wizards do a virtual concert, and this past weekend, we had Holiday on Saturn do a virtual concert. A uh, newer band, and uh, one of the members is actually Aaron Emerson, whom we've had on the show before. And, yeah, of course, son of Keith Emerson, of course. Uh, speaking of that, there are a couple news items, uh, sort of ELP member related. Uh, so there's a Carl Palmer collection coming out on April 5th called Fanfare for the Common Man. It's a deluxe career spanning three CD and Blu-ray box set. Um, and people can pre-order that. Again, comes out April 5th. And recently, as a tribute to Greg Lake, there was this release uh, titled um, For the Love of Greg Lake. And this is by Paola Tagliaferro. And La... How do you pronounce this? La Campagna de Les. Um, so, yeah, this basically... Uh, Italian singer-songwriter uh, takes a second journey into the wonderful world of Greg Lake with nine beautiful songs performed in his honor, and this came out on February 14th, so people can go ahead and check that out where it's available on official streaming places. Uh, it released on Manticore Records, and the cover design was by Regina Lake, interestingly enough. Uh, so... Yeah, basically just catching up on things. Um, geez, I had a thought. I was going to mention something just now that seemed relevant. Um, but uh, it'll come back to me. But anyway, yeah, Holiday on Saturn, that show was great. Um, I guess I'm kind of doing these out of order at first. But a uh, great jazz band. Uh, you can find, um, well, whenever they have their social media. I'll see what I can find and post them when available. Um, so yeah, check them out and check out the Kinky Wizards. And as far as Yes-related news, uh, there was this press release that came out. Uh, I think this is on Thursday or Friday. So, uh, yeah, okay. So, uh, Yes are... You, you already know this, a lot of you, I'm sure. They'll be touring Europe and the UK uh, this spring, I believe, um, toward the end of April is when they start. And uh, this press release says, to coincide with this, they have launched a brand new video for an edited version of the album's epic title track, and you can watch that now here. So that would be Mirror to the Sky. And this is a seven-minute version of the song. The video looks interesting, um, you know, the visuals and such, but the edit is it's kind of strange because, you know, Mirror to the Sky, the title track, I feel like was the all-around favorite from people who listened to the album. And this seven-minute edit 
it's uh, it, it like there's some things in the beginning and the end that are kind of trimmed out like just off the top of my head from what i remember where i'm like left thinking oh i kind of wish i could get more of this but hey that's what the full version is for i think as a sort of a single edit if you can call it that it, it does its job uh, and this press release also says a new limited edition a new limited two cd plus blu-ray digit pack edition of the album will also be released on the 5th of april okay another april 5th release interesting uh, this edition features a full album plus a Blu-ray, including Dolby Atmos, 5.1 surround sound, and instrumental mixes of the album, and is available to pre-order. Uh, so, yeah. And I I'm not really sure what the difference is between this and the version I got with the, you know, it's a big art book, and I think it has these features from what I remember, but... Uh, maybe there will be more about that as it gets closer. Um, I just remembered the thing I was going to mention. So I previously mentioned, you know, last time I did a broadcast, I did a review of the Harvey Lee memoir, uh, Backstage Pass. And I mentioned that he was going to be interviewed on Drum Talk TV by my dad last week. Uh, we ended up having to reschedule that due to unforeseen circumstances, but... Now that is scheduled on Tuesday the 27th at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. UK time. And the day before that, so tomorrow, Monday the 26th at noon Pacific, Dad and I will be live here on Yes Shift, um, on, at least on the Facebook page, um, celebrating Oliver Wakeman's birthday, so doing a little birthday episode for him. Uh, so that'll be a lot of fun as well. And yeah, I'm trying to remember if there's any other news item here. Um, I think I'll... Yeah. Um, if there is, it'll get back to me. Um, I, Sorry, I, it's been a minute. I'm trying to get everything in order. And uh, some of this, I'm kind of just like winging it as far as structure goes. Uh, but... Yeah, so I guess I'll start with the the Earthside and Caligula's horse show on the 20th. Uh, I, they were, like, touring together, so saw them at the same venue. And then on the 24th, so yesterday, I saw a fake band practice, which is an emo pop punk band. Uh, a couple of my friends are in it. Um, so my friends Derek and Keon and um yeah you you can find them on um like they have an EP out and you can find them on YouTube as well so yeah fake band practice you go ahead and check them out a lot of fun stuff um but Caligula's Horse and Earthside uh some of you might possibly be familiar with them because they're both prog metal I would say but Apparently, Earthside also uh, considers themselves cinematic rock, which in context makes sense when you see more of their stuff. Uh, funny enough, the 20th of February was the anniversary of the concert I went to uh, last year, which was my first concert of Toy Toy 3. Um, that one included Lobate Scarp uh moon letters and behold the monolith and long time yes shift listeners will know that we've had adam sears from mobate scarp on the show for an interview a while back um yeah i think the anniversary of that passed recently i also saw the anniversary of the yes album passed it's 53 now so yeah um also before i forget i want to send out well wishes to Philly Hart on behalf of me and my dad and, um, you know, Yes Shift and Drum Talk TV uh, that his recovery go well. He had to, uh, he had to take a break from the road because of a recent heart attack. So he'll still be managing Kansas, but uh, yeah, we're hoping for the best for him. Uh, so 
Yeah, getting back to the concert on the 20th. So this was at the Echoplex, you know, the Earthside and Caligula's Horse concert was at the Echoplex in Los Angeles. It's kind of easy to miss. It's kind of tucked away. Like, um, like on the street, there's like a tattoo parlor and you have to like sort of go down this little alley and go left and there's the bar. As far as bar venues go, you know, I think in my head I had this preconceived idea that uh, maybe it'll be kind of smelly because, you know, some bars are like that, but it wasn't, there wasn't really any of that at all. I was like kind of pleasantly surprised. Uh, so, yeah, praise for the Echoplex. Uh, I, yeah. Um, when I got there, it was kind of early because... Uh, I got the VIP upgrade, so I was going to meet with uh, the Caligula's Horse band members, uh, attend their sound check and Q&A and stuff. Uh, when I got there, there were a couple people already waiting for the VIP thing. Like I think they had just arrived, and uh, we got to talking. Uh, one of them was um, like a really... Uh, into like really knew his stuff as far as Caligula's horse's history is concerned and I had to uh, mention that like I was sort of a newer fan um my dad interviewed their drummer Josh Griffin over on Drum Talk TV a few weeks ago and after the interview I talked with Josh a bit about sci-fi and horror so really fun conversation so, yeah, basically the only Caligula's Horse stuff I'd listened to was their newer album, Charcoal Grace, which is really good, really heavy. And uh, this guy that I met, he, like, really knew, like, the Caligula's Horse history and, uh, I guess, the personnel changes, the albums, and he showed me, like, a couple CD copies of the albums that he was going to get signed. And uh, I was, I kind of felt like um, the odd one out here because it's like, oh, I'm newer to this. Uh, this uh, feeling a little bit out of my depth, but like I'm still a fan of the music, so it's like it's all good. And you know, there were good vibes there. There wasn't um, any gatekeeping or anything, and so we were just like talking about music and stuff. So it, it was a cool conversation. Um, before the VIP thing happened, uh, we saw Jamie, the guitarist from Earthside, uh, like, he was, like, uh, getting stuff ready, and, um, talked to, with him a little bit before the sh show, he was talking with, um, the guy I was talking to, and, uh, mentioning how, like, um, after the previous Earthside album, which I later learned was a dream and static. Uh, that one came out 2015. So their newer album um, came out, I believe, last year. So there's quite a gap in between. And he he was like, we really wanted to put out the next album like right after, but like we really want to make sure that it was perfect. So yeah, I, I can sympathize like. I've worked on some things where I really want to put them out, but have to wait because I really want to make sure that it's really good and, like, the best presentable version that it can be. Uh, so when the VIP uh, thing started, you know, we were let into the venue. The bar was pretty spacious. Uh, w when the concert eventually happened, I feel like half of it, half of the place was full, the back half uh which was like toward the bar and the back was like a bit more spacious. Uh, like the crowd was mainly toward the front in front of the stage. And I'm not sure if the venue is usually like this or if it varies um, from show to show, but yeah, it didn't get too, too crowded, but there was like a really hyped up crowd. Uh, so at the sound check, they played a couple songs and they even... A Caligula's Horse, like, they even asked us, um, like, which song do you guys here want us to play for you? Like, we'll choose between Rust and, um, what was the other song? Hang on. 
I gotta look this up. So it was Rust and, okay. Oh, here it is in my notes. Uh, Dark Hair Down. So they said that they would play one of those songs exclusively to us, and at the show itself, they would play the other song. So there were more votes for Rust. Um, I honestly, like, didn't know what what to pick and, you know, being the new guy here. But I saw that the crowd was mainly leaning toward Rust, so I just went ahead and, like, went with that. Uh, so they played Rust, and, like, it was really cool. Um, and then they did this Q&A that was, uh, real, that I guess helped me get to know the band a bit better. I, I didn't ask any questions. I let the people who are more familiar with the band ask the questions. Um, yeah, I'm just looking at my notes. Um, okay, uh, someone asked how Adrian is doing. Now, Adrian was the rhythm guitarist of the band for a time and uh, they said he's doing great he's uh, more into um, the video world but they keep in touch with him still so it's nice to hear that he's doing well uh, and someone else asked what's the best song to introduce someone to the band and a couple answers that were thrown out were dream of the dead and the world breathes with me and they were also asked what the top, toughest song to, for them to play is. Um, Josh and Dale, uh, Josh being the drummer, Dale being the bassist, uh, said Grave. And Jim, the vocalist, said Tempest. And Sam, the guitarist, said Dream of the Dead. Um, yeah, and someone else asked if there could be, like, more i i think they were asking like about the song golem which is on the new album and if there could be more stuff like that in the set uh, i think that was what they're asking i wasn't really clear on like what they were asking at the time but um yeah i i, I think the big takeaway that i remember was that they don't try to make things like things just sort of happen organically i guess is a big takeaway you know um and they were also talking about the album covers and how they try to make each album cover a different style like you know as a yes fan i'm and an asia fan and some other bands you know i'm so used to bands having a consistent visual identity from album to album um, but I thought it was quite fascinating how with Caligula's Horse, apparently they try to make it so that each album has a different identity. And for this one, Charcoal's Grace, they went for a neo-surrealist, uh, kind of Salvador Dali-influenced feel. Um, so yeah, all around it was a really fun, enlightening Q&A. And then they let us uh, get buy stuff from the merch stand. So we were the first ones. And I got the Charcoal's Grace LP. And I also got um, the, I, I was also the first one to get the Earth Side uh, Let the Truth Speak LP. Um, you know, even though I don't personally own a record player, I like having the vinyl versions for the artwork and they're really cool um so and i had not listened to any Earthside before getting this record uh but i did listen to charcoal grace before going to the show uh you know for caligula's horse um, let me just grab the records real quick so i got both of them autographed like just give me a sec here. All right, so well, first off, they gave us a couple things of swag. Um, yeah, so this was the VIP pass that they gave us, uh, Caligula's Horse VIP, and also the tour dates. Um, kind of, yeah. 
And they also gave us uh, this Caligula's Horse Tour poster. Let's see, hopefully that looks good on the thing. Uh, and yeah, like the band members signed that. And they also signed, um, here it is, Charcoal, Charcoal Grace. Yeah, it's a nice looking cover. Um, I feel like the picture, I feel like the picture quality on here doesn't really do it justice, uh, you know, the webcam quality, but you can see the signatures and the, oh, here's the backside for those off the mirror, but yeah, definitely looks better uh, in person and if you look at it online. Um, let me see if I can get the, carefully get the discs out. Yeah, it's really cool. All right, so this is a white vinyl. I feel like there's a name for this shade of white, but I think it's like bone white. I think that's what it's called. Um, so that's side A, side B. Whenever I hold records up for like, to show them to the webcam i cut i kind of wonder like am i hold, like do people watch this and say oh he's holding them wrong or something like i don't know um i'm not as seasoned with records as other people are i'm only 29 and i've it's only been in the last uh several years like once in a while i'll get like lps you know and this is the other disc so, looks like only one side of this has tracks on it. Uh, so, yeah. Alright, so, um, like I said, they signed this, and uh, they also asked, do you want us to sign your Earthside <laughs> record? And I was, like, laughing, and I was like, well, I mean, you guys can if you want, uh, but yeah, they, they didn't end up signing that. Um, I later ended up getting them signed by the Earthside band members, which I'll talk about in a moment. But yeah, I was able to get a, you know, talk to the Caligula's Horse members. You know, Josh recognized me. He was like, oh, Steven. Um, so yeah, we were able to talk and I asked him what or I asked them like th what their favorite foods that they've tried out here in America have been because this is their first North America tour like ever they're an Australian band out of Brisbane and they were going to tour a few years ago in North America but then the pandemic happened um so yeah of course it got delayed and they finally got around to it and they mentioned Chicago deep dish pizza and some tacos in San Diego. Um, and, uh, yeah, I also, um, told Josh, uh, I finished my Babylon five rewatch recently. I got the Blu-ray set and watched it again from start to finish, you know, the whole show. And he said, Oh yeah, I've been trying to rewatch it, but I keep like falling asleep, I guess, cause of like the, touring schedule and whatnot probably but um and then i was like oh yeah sleeping in light and we both laughed because that's the title of the series finale of babylon 5 um and i got a group photo with them i don't know how good this will look if i show the phone to the webcam but i'll give it a little taste i'm gonna post the photos i have at some point later um i haven't gone around to it because I really don't know why. I feel like in this past year or so, I've kind of been... Um, oh, that didn't look very clear, did it? Um, okay, <laughs> it looks like we're all glowing when I do that. Uh, to be fair, the lighting, like, when the photo was taken, made us look like we're glowing already, but you could still see our faces. But I guess when I show it to the webcam, it, like, obscures our faces. Uh, but yeah, I feel like in the past year or so, 
I've kind of gotten out of the habit of posting photos from events I attend like right away. Um, I really don't know why I've gotten out of the habit of that, but I'll be posting these uh, later. But like I said, um, I also got the Earthside album Let the Truth Speak signed. Um, yeah, you can see it there. Um, I don't know how well the signatures come out, but yeah, the cover looks very Poison Ivy-esque, like the artwork. Um, I even told uh, one of the band members, um, well, well, first off, so I was trying to get it signed um, later after Earthside's set. Um, because I saw Jamie um, was by the merch stand, like in between the Earthside set and the Caligula's horse set, and I didn't um, get to him until uh, when Caligula's horse was starting to play. And Jamie said, "Hey, so uh, Stephen, right?" And I was like, "Yeah." And he was like, "Okay, so um, uh, go ahead and uh, check out, like, go ahead and enjoy Caligula's horse, and later after the show, me and the rest of the band will." be here by the merch stand and all four of us will sign the you know the record and yeah i thought that was like really uh like that was really shows character right there you know it, it's really cool when these bands like support each other and also reassuring that oh okay like we're all gonna be here to sign it so like don't worry like i thought that was like really cool um and i'll talk about the set lists in a moment but after the show um like once the entire Caligula horse show was over, I went to the merch stand and I got the signatures from each of the Earthside members. Uh, so Jamie and I think I think Ben was the one who um you know Ben the drummer was the one who um I told like it the cover has like a poison ivy aesthetic to it and he explained to me that. Oh yeah, like the uh, person that is sort of modeled after, like actually has like a, a different shade of hair, but how it comes out here makes it like have more of that sort of color. Um, yeah, I'm paraphrasing, of course, but yeah, I think the order that I got it signed in was Jamie, then uh, Frank, who's the keyboardist, and Ben, and then Ryan. Uh, Ryan Griffin, Josh Griffin. I wonder if there's a relation there. Huh. Anyway, so yeah, they're really cool guys. And again, like really happy to have both of these LPs. They look really cool. Um, I guess I should take out the record for um, Let the Truth Speak. Yeah, I feel like I say record and cover and disc in interchangeably when talking about these but it just makes things easier for me so this is red so it really matches the hair that's on the cover um let me change tabs real quick um okay yeah <laughs> it's ridiculous how you can like see the reflection of like me broadcasting myself in the thing um but yeah, I quite like this. Um, uh, like it kind of reminds me of a frisbee, but it also reminds me of like cherry flavored candy. So that's the first disc, and the other one. Oh, I should show you, you all the inner artwork for these. Um, okay, here's the other disc. Something I um forgot to mention is that there was plenty of time. Oh, that's really cool. It has a face on there. Uh, there was plenty of break time between the VIP session and the concert actually starting. So I did a bit of exploring around that neighborhood. Um, I went to this place called Stories and Books Cafe, I think it was called. Uh, the Pink Floyd song, Childhood's End, was playing 
and I saw these uh, the section of the store with music books, or music related books rather. Uh, one of them was Getty Lee's My F and Life, which Dad and I have talked about here and there. Um, and there was also a Pink Floyd book about Dark Side of the Moon, which came out last year um it had 50 years in the title so it was for the 50th anniversary so because there was pink floyd music playing i was tempted to get it but for some reason i just wasn't like feeling the vibe that i absolutely need to get it right now i will read it right now like i wasn't like really feeling that vibe for whatever reason like maybe i'll get around to it eventually but yeah, I basically just ended up getting chips and coffee from that place. Uh, they, they serve other foods there, but up to a certain time. And so uh, I down the street, uh, like not too far away, there's also this uh, place called Sage Brewing. I think that's what it's called. Um, just double checking. Okay, Sage, Plant Based, Bistro, and Brewery. Yeah, and they had some really great butternut squash ravioli, and it was so good. <laughs> like, I was so sad when I finished it. Uh, while I was sitting there, I, uh, I should also mention I had these records and the poster. I was, like, carrying them around. And so I had them with me, and... Uh, while I was eating dinner at uh, that bistro, you know, at Sage, um, a couple other people came in, sat down at the table next to mine, and they noticed, and they were like, oh, were, were you at the VIP session? And I was like, oh, yeah, it was really cool. So, And later I saw them uh, during the show. Like, I could see them uh, across the room, but um, I like, couldn't really go talk to them because, like, there was, like, you know, the music was already being played. Uh, so I definitely recommend that place, Sage. Uh, not to be confused with my dad's cat of the same name. Um, oh. Yeah, here's the inside of the Earthside album with the lineup. I'm trying to be really careful, make sure I don't drop anything. And the Charcoal Grace. Okay, yeah, it's more um, it's more text heavy actually. All right, let me set these uh to my safe place, and then I'll be right back. Talk about the set list. All right, so. As I was watching uh, the bands perform, I kind of had uh, the setlist FM site opened up so that I could see, you know, compare and contrast like uh, between other shows. But I would only, I wouldn't look at the setlist, like the full setlist all at once. It, it was more like once they play one song, I would like scroll and look at what the first song at a previous show was and... Uh, the Earthside setlist seemed pretty consistent, and so did the Caligula's Horse setlist for that matter. Just the swapping between uh, Rust and a Dark Hair Down, you know? Um, and maybe something else, but I'll, I'll get to that. So for Earthside, they had these uh, screens to the, on the sides of the stage. You know, there are two screens, so... Uh, for at least a couple of these songs from what i remember they, they played like what look like music videos and they're like oh these are the guest vocalists on these songs um and they played we who lament pattern of rebirth watching the earth sink that one is an instrumental then they played let the truth speak and all four of those are from their most recent album uh let the truth speak and then they closed with The Closest I've Come, which was from their first album. So really good representation of their latest work and a little tip of the hat to their 
first work that started it all. So I thought that was very well balanced. Um, and I didn't listen to Let the Truth Speak, you know, the whole album until uh, later because, um, you know, seeing them, I, I told Jamie this, that seeing them play uh, music and concert was my first time listening to them. You know, when I bought the ticket i was just going to see caligula's horse and i saw oh earthside is also gonna be part of the show okay maybe i'll check them out beforehand too and then i just sort of ran out of time to check out their music beforehand but there's something magical about that you know going to a concert and listening to their music for the first time um it kind of reminded me of another concert i went to a few years ago where i saw in mirrors um and they were one of the opening acts and like it was my first time hearing them um but yeah i think there's something magical to go into a concert where you've never heard the band's music and that's your first time hearing them because later on listening to the album and listening to like we who lament uh, like i could remember how hype it was like hearing that as an opener for their concert um and throughout both of these sets uh, i think i was mainly like uh, you know i wasn't in the crowd right in front of the stage i was more like uh next to the sound mixer person um you know outside of the box thing sometimes like off to the side like sitting um by the wall and uh, yeah, I, like they gave out free earplugs and I was expecting, you know, because it's prog metal, like I was kind of expecting that um, it might be so much I would need to put in earplugs, but I never felt like I needed to put in the earplugs actually. So I was kind of surprised about that, pleasantly surprised. Um, so yeah, Earthside, a really excellent set, great showmanship and uh, Caligula's Horus, like same can be said for them as well uh so i was looking at the like i said i do the whole compare and contrast set list thing and i feel like their set list was pretty consistent uh, between towns just a swapping of rust and a dark hair down but there was something that i wasn't quite sure so uh, they began with The World Breathes With Me, then Golem, Slow Violence, Dark Hair Down, Bloom, and then after this was sort of where it got kind of murky for me. Um, I wasn't quite sure, like, I, I think they may have played The Tempest here, but I'm not 100% sure if they played Marigold. Um, like they've done at previous shows, apparently. Like they play between Bloom and The Tempest. Um, well, like I've said, I'm like newer to the band, so off the top of my head, I can't really say, oh yeah, they for sure played this. You know, like I, I honestly, I kind of envy the people who are like how I am with Yes, but with Caligula's Horse and these other bands, it's a funny feeling to have. Um, but after that, they for sure played Ocean Rise, Dream the Dead, The Storm Chaser. The opening notes of that, there's something magical about it because I, I was really familiar with the music video they put out for it. And so seeing it live, like, there's just something about it. You know, that's the power of a single, I guess you could say. Um, and then they played Mute, and for the encore, they played Graves. And some of these are like kind of longish pieces um, compared to like your typical like three to five minute, um, you know, radio song. And, you know, as a prog fan, I'm used to this kind of stuff. It's just the metal aspect of it is a little bit beyond my uh, comfort zone in a way. But I really enjoyed both of these performances. And in between the songs and the Caligula's horse set for with some good humor going around uh of people like praising each of the band members and um you know the band sort of now and then like funny differences between America and Australia um at one point they mentioned how you know with America they 
kept hearing news about some of the, you know, the awful things and aspects that are prevalent. But when they got here, they were pleasantly surprised that, like, from the Americans they've seen while touring, they see that there's a lot of tolerance, and that's, like, it really inspiring to them. So I'm really glad that they've had a great experience uh, coming to America and uh, apparently haven't really had brushes with the, you know, the sides of America that are kind of, you know, the negative aspects, I guess um, I should say, um, without going too deeply into it. But uh, yeah, so everyone had a great time. People were like really into the music. I was really into it. Um, yeah, and um, I feel like there was like something else I was going to say. Um, but yeah, I don't know. These are both like really great sh uh, sets. And yeah, I definitely recommend both bands. Um, and yeah, y you're sure to find something you like, I'm sure. Uh, so yeah, and like I said, later in the week, I saw... Uh, my friend's band, Fake Band Practice. Uh, this was put up by the Exhibit Gallery in Fullerton. So uh, they and uh, before them, a couple other bands uh, played in this venue that looks kind of like a, a garage, but bigger and really cooler. Like there's um, some, you know, dark lighting and also like some uh, low bits of artwork on the walls and yeah so like i said fake band practice is an emo pop punk band and you can find them on social media and they have an ep out um their set list and i think the previous band set lists were maybe 20 ish minutes or so each um but yeah they were very high energy and they like, kind you know my friend uh was saying how like uh, they kind of have that energy about them of people who've, like, played rock band and had fun. And, like, I get that vibe, too, you know, rock band and guitar hero. Um, but, yeah, they're really great at what they do. Um, Keon on the drums is, like, really, like, you know, like, they, they were all great. And um, uh, Keon uh, sent me the set list because, like, I didn't know the song names off the top of my head, but... The one that, like, was very, you know, I feel like everyone who's present knew was the closing song, What's My Age Again, you know, the Blink-182 classic. So the set list was My Dog Ate My Doritos and I'm Late for Work. Um, that's on, his, on the EP, and I, I love that title. Uh, then they played Summer, and then Here's to Sierra Vista. And then Artesia, and then Movie Star Girl. That one's also on the EP. Uh, so, yeah, go ahead and uh, check them out. And they have, like, some clips from their shows on their social media as well. Um, and, and like I said, I've taken photos from this and from the Caligula's Horse and Earthside show. And I'll post them on social media. Some of them are, like, kind of from far away, like, audience shots so they might not be the best but they are nice memories and i'm glad to have experienced these so yeah go ahead and check out a uh, fake band practice um so yeah like i said emo pop punk and uh the others earthside and uh caligula's horse are more prog metal um oh also at the yeah at the echoplex i was wearing um this rush t-shirt you know roll the bones t-shirt and for whatever reason this really drew the attention of some uh people you know people who are rush fans um of different ages and um y y you know it got us talking about rush and it's kind of funny how like wearing this at the getty lee book tour did not spark conversation you know i was kind of just doing my own thing and people were like talking to each other you know everyone's a rush fan there but i guess wearing this at uh caligula's horse earthside concert is kind of like uh people finding 
uh, others who have something in common other than like those bands and be like, oh, you're a Rush fan too. Um, I think a couple of these people thought that I was, that maybe I was older than I actually am. Again, I'm 29, but maybe I look older. So maybe that was a bit of a wake up call, but uh, it was really cool being able to talk about Rush with um, a few of these people that I bumped into. Um, so yeah, um, and like I said, in between these shows, you know, the Echoplex show on the 20th and the um, fake band practice show on the 24th, which I think was around a year after the first time I saw a fake band practice perform, you know, I've been friends with the drummer since uh, college and actually Derek as well around then, I think, um, toward the end of college, maybe. Um, so yeah, just a little context there. Um, so yeah, in between shows, I went to the John Anderson, a Patreon Zoom session. He tries to do these once a month. Uh, sometimes there are exceptions, like for example, whenever there's touring and I think they're, um, getting details together regarding upcoming touring. I know there's an ad out already for, uh, july show that's in the new york state area um but yeah whenever those details are out you know i'm sure we'll be talking about them um so apparently there's some touching up going on for the song building the song that um john and jimmy Hahn worked on and oh we talked a little bit about Jethro Tull, uh, someone uh, mentioned them, and then John talked about how when Yes toured with Jethro Tull, uh, John was, um, you know, talked to Ian Anderson, and he joked by saying, he's my cousin. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, and he was really impressed with Ian Anderson's showmanship and had a beer with him and thanked him for teaching him about stage presence, so that was really cool to hear. Uh, we talked a bit about some illustrations that the people on Patreon have been uh, sort of engaging with, um, like these artworks that uh, are really cool. Um, John recalled a time when someone recognized his voice and thought that he was the Vangelis of the John and Vangelis duo, so uh, that was very funny. Uh, got to talking about his Deseo album. Uh, he's kind of giving the backstory for that. He's like, I started living in Big Bear and a friend from Uruguay talked about South American music. And for the tour, um, you know, John was uh, asked to play Yes music after a certain point because uh, people wanted Yes music and not just music from like that they're you know, I guess people want variety no matter like where you are. And so uh, they had to add yes music or else the tour might have been canceled or something. I talked a bit about Toltec and, you know, that used to be called the Power of Silence, uh, like the Carlos Castaneda book, but um, it had to, you know, the album title had to change. Um, so... John mentioned sending the album to a record company and was told that uh, they don't hear a single, <laughs> which is, yeah, yeah, Toltec, I think, is an excellent album, even if there isn't a track that sounds like an obvious single. Um, and John didn't know how to end Toltec, so he wrote words for Mozart's Av Verum. Uh, not knowing that there were already words to it, but yeah, it's a beautiful song, and I told him as much, so it's, I thought it was a great way to close it, and apparently um, he met Jane around the time that he was finishing the album. Um, let's see. Yeah, there, there are some things I don't think I can talk about, but I'm, like, really excited, like, about what's coming up, like, music-wise from John. Um, someone asked him about 
uh, when he did soundtrack work with John Paul Jones. I think that was for a movie called, um, what was it called? Uh, I remember it had the songs Silver Train and Christy on it. Um, was it called Scream for Help? Is that what it was? Yeah, I'm just like double checking real quick. All right, this would have been for Scream for Help. Okay, I had that in mind, but I wasn't, I was like 90% sure. Um, and let's see. Yeah, I talked a little bit about the talk era and uh, base, how it was like basically living with Trevor Rabin during that. And yeah, I'm, I'm excited to like do the 30th anniversary celebration of that album in March. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I definitely recommend these John Anderson Patreon Zoom things because uh, you do get to learn about, you know, what might be coming up, what he's working on and, you know, just being able to chat with him. It's really cool. So yeah, that's basically the music activities of the past week. Um, yeah, um, yeah. I really hope I like gave each thing like it's due because I know it's been a bit of distance in this uh, kinky wizards thing and your know, holiday on Saturn. You know, I love some of the improvisational feel of some of their stuff. Um, and yeah, so. Um, I'm not really sure how to end this. Um, but yeah, like I said, uh, we're doing an Oliver Wakeman birthday episode tomorrow, noon Pacific, uh, on 26th. Um, and then the dad's interview with Harvey Lee should be happening on the 27th at 8 a.m. Pacific. And yeah, like whatever news comes out. And we have some topics that we've already uh put on the schedule i know things have been kind of quiet around here like we've been pretty busy with some stuff you know like drum talk tv and whatnot but yeah really glad i was able to make time to come on here and talk about some music related things that have been happening and i'm I, i'm also um in may uh, i almost forgot to mention this i'm gonna see Ruth Radelit, um, and I guess she's opening for STRFKR. I'm not really sure if they prefer um, having the phonetic name being said or the, just the letters, but uh, I'm not familiar with that band. But Ruth Radelit uh, herself was um, the singer for Chromatics, and I'm seeing her perform on may 4th which will be the fifth anniversary of when i saw chromatics um like i alluded to earlier uh, in mirrors and desire opened for them so uh it's real weird how like some of these concerts are like on anniversaries you know february 20th and now may 4th uh so yeah i'm real excited that that's coming up in a couple months so i'm sure that'll be really cool um, so yeah, and until next time, uh, you can follow Yes Shift via at Yes Shift on YouTube or Facebook, and we're on uh, podcast platforms. Just search Yes Shift; you'll probably find us. And you can email Yes Shift Podcast at gmail dot com for suggestions, feedback, ideas. And yeah, until next time. Um, I uh, hope you all have a wonderful day wherever you are.